Welcome back to another episode of Recapping 90 Day Fiancé. Today, we'll be recapping what happened on Season 10, Episode 12, between Sam and Citra and Justin, Igor, and Nikki. So you know what that means. Sit down, buckle up, and let's go for a ride. Quick recap, because it's been a couple weeks. Last episode, Sam dropped the bomb to Citra that he failed to file his diversion paperwork, and so he might be going to jail after they get married. Citra is still angry obviously, but she says that their love is strong and she's going to stand with him through this, which damn, thank God Sam bought her that rice cooker because it scored him mad points apparently. As punishment for keeping the secret from her, Citra is cooking him a spicy ass Indonesian dish. I'm going to put everything like spiciness in your food to burn me a new ass in other words. So Sam is taking Citra to meet his mom for the first time. And Sam goes on to say that him and his mother have been estranged for the past decade, but they recently have been trying to rebuild their relationship. There's a reason I keep my distance from my mother, though. And goes on to say things like his mom is from the deep end of the crazy pool. My mom's side, they were really religious and they love to preach, but don't follow what they say. And he's getting nervous because he doesn't know what she's thinking. Like, she might think that Muslims don't wash up. It could just be something weird. They meet Sam's mom and his grandma and everything seems to be going pretty well. You know, his mom is making jokes and smiling. They settle down a bit more and Sam brings up the wedding and his mom immediately starts to tense up. She asks if the wedding will be a Muslim ceremony and Citra says, well, yes, cause he's going to convert. And through gritted teeth, his mom says, that's, that's good. His mother goes on to tell us that she does not think anyone should have to convert beliefs just so they can get married. She goes on to immediately contradict herself. If I could have it my way, I'm not going to stand here and lie. I would love to see her serving the same God as I do. His mom goes on to ask, like, what happens if Sam doesn't want to convert? Like, are you going to call off the wedding? And Citra pauses for a second and essentially basically says, yeah, like they wouldn't be able to continue forward with their relationship. Sam's mom is having a pretty difficult time grasping the concept of a Christian at a Muslim ceremony. And she's like, how do you go to something that you don't approve of? So I am not religious, but I do come from a pretty religious family and a religious upbringing. I just don't understand what the big deal is if someone doesn't practice the same faith as you. I can understand if Sam was saying, oh, mom, I'm going to convert to a religion where they sacrifice a kitten every day to a spaghetti monster in the sky. Like, okay, maybe let's hold off on the conversion with that one. But I don't know, I think if it isn't hurting anyone and it's consensual, then let people just people the way they want to people, you know? Next up is Justin, Igor, and Nikki. So Justin, Igor, and Nikki are leaving the winery and I kind of honestly forgot what happened with them before. Um... Oh, right. Justin Igor had told Nikki that he had been sleeping with other women while they were dating, but only before they got engaged. So Justin Igor is a little bit confused because they're about to get engaged. And why is Nikki being so upset that he had sex friends while they were dating? He tries to go on and justify this to Nikki by saying he did not know if they were going to work out. If you want, we can try together. Try what? Another girl. I don't know what it is with these men and thinking that another woman in the bedroom is going to solve their problems. Justin says that it is one of his dreams to have a threesome and and doesn't understand why he can't share his sexual desires with his fiance. And he's right. He should be able to discuss his sexual fantasies with his fiance. But maybe try to actually want to have sex with your fiance before talking about bringing another woman into the picture. Nikki is unsure if Justin wants a threesome because she's trans and he doesn't think that she's woman enough for him or if he's just trying to get her jealous and get a rise out of her. They get home and Nikki sits down with Justin to have a serious talk. Justin grabs this stuffed animal. Like, put that away, bro. It's not going to protect you. Nikki asks how many women he's been with since they've been together and Justin says, Mm, Maybe two. Damn, you really needed all that time to count to two? That makes me feel like it's way more than two. Nikki brings up his desire for a threesome and she tries to explain like she's done all that experimenting and she's not looking to experiment anymore. She wants to settle down. And I've been with girls, two guys me, two girls me and a guy. I even had three guys me in Paris. Stop giving him ideas. 
Justin leaves and Nikki goes to FaceTime her mom. She tells her mom that Justin, you know, told her that he's been seeing other people while they were dating. He keeps bringing up a threesome and her mother spits straight facts and says, Nikki, you have to give him an ultimatum. On the flip side, Justin is out with his friend Ivan and he catches him up on how Nikki now knows he's been seeing other people while they were together. And and Justin justifies it by saying like, I'm a man. We didn't see her until she was in the car. Я же нормальный мужчина, конечно, был. He goes on to say that a lot of times he doesn't feel like he's dealing with a woman and instead is talking to her masculine side. And bro has got to get over this whole masculine feminine thing. Ivan goes on to say that women are naturally manipulative, rude, and Justin needs to put a stop to it by showing his more masculine side and showing that he's stronger than her. Can't wait to see Justin Peacock what his idea of masculinity is. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, thanks for not letting me ride this train wreck alone. Bye.